Who is Richard Cromwell? He is history itself. The first human born in outer space. His birth marked the end of the golden age of space exploration. The new age came to be known as the colonization era. The moon colony was established and not long after, the first murder in space took place. In the AI wars, Earth's economy collapsed. Entire continents were left without energy and information. A planet-wide ban on artificial intelligences was put in place. At just 10 years old, the legendary Richard Cromwell signed the Earth Sector Convention. One boy symbolizing an entire people's aspiration towards a civilized, peaceful future. Who was Richard Cromwell? He was my father. On the day I was born, he bought an Orbital Limited bond in my name. Today, it's worth 13,000 times its original value. The year was 2067, the year we discovered the wormhole. My father was appointed captain of Noah's Ark. To this day, I cannot forget the awe that ship inspired in me. It took off when I was 10. It was around that time that I decided I wanted to become an astronaut. I gained a dream, but lost a father. Once I graduated from the academy, I signed up with the Federation fleet. As it turned out, I joined at the worst possible time. OSEC, Orbital Limited, Aerospace, one after the other, the colonies of the mega-corporations seceded. At the Academy, we could see where it was all heading. It was a strange war. People killing each other took all the money they had earned and spent it together. The area around Mars became a battleground. It was not our war. We were no more than foot soldiers. Outer space is a calm place. My ship was hit in an encounter near Phobos, and for 10 Earth years I orbited the red planet in a cloud of space debris. Below me, the Martian war was raging. I could only stare, my eyes frozen to glass. That they finally found me is nothing short of a miracle. They rescued me and reanimated me. No one seemed to care which side I'd been fighting on. I became a war hero in a war that we ultimately lost. The whole of space has changed. The ISA has little authority beyond the orbit of the moon. Corporate fleets and illegal AIs control the outer solar system. With the boom in colonization, there aren't enough experienced captains to meet the demand. Space Tech made me an offer. I took it. Marcus Cromwell, Captain's Log, 0309-2111. We have left Earth's sector. Our destination is Jupiter. We face a journey of almost eight months. On the way, we're picking up two space tech cargo ships. They're waiting in orbit around the moon. I have been assigned as the leader of the convoy. 
0509-2111. The two cargo ships have joined us. Their crews are minimal, but the two captains could talk the rivets out of a bulkhead. It's going to be a long eight months. Fortunately, the Stiletto's 12th sister ship, the ISF Hawking, will be joining us. It's sailing under the ISA flag, but the captain, Francis DeLorean, is an old friend of mine. 0712-2111. I joined the firm three years ago. So much has happened since then. The Mars quarantine, the Ceres crisis. I wonder if this mission will be remembered as the Jupiter incident. Three twelve twenty one eleven. Like an early Christmas gift, the Hawking finally arrived, two days behind schedule. Francis hasn't changed. It's good to see the old man again. O four o two twenty one twelve. It seems I was tempting fate. This mission may yet be known as the Jupiter incident. Space Tech's spy satellites are broadcasting some alarming pictures. The Kasaki Syndicate's recent activities have generated a lot of attention. I suspect it's no accident that Francis is on his way there. It's reassuring to have the ISA on our side. 0103-2112. The final briefing has arrived. Mission template, reconnaissance, espionage. The Kasaki Syndicate's technological prowess has the mega corporations running scared. According to our intelligence, the source of their revolutionary advances is the Shokenja research station in Jupiter sector. Our task is going to involve surveillance of the station. It may even extend to sabotage or a hostile incursion, if those are our orders. Every corporation in existence would love to pry into the Syndicate's research data. The situation is tense. A confrontation is almost inevitable. 2004-2112 we have arrived at Jupiter Sector and will soon reach Europa. The convoy is heading towards the twin stations Sunflower and Michelangelo. We're receiving a code red from the base. It entails the highest level of corporate security measures. Angelo Station hailing convoy TTC 24-7. You have reached the arrival zone. Welcome to Jupiter Sector. Thank you, Michelangelo. Convoy dismissed. I'm handing the ships over to you. I can't believe I'm speaking with the Captain Cromwell. They're all talking about you back at the station, sir. It's not often we get celebrities out here. Did you have a pleasant flight? Pleasant? That's not the word I'd use. The most exciting thing to happen in eight months was the toilet backing up. Transmitted the coordinates to each of the ships. Please stand by in the designated navigation area. Stay clear of the asteroids. We're on a level two alert. Minefields are active. I repeat, minefields are active. Michelangelo, we've got a code red. Yes, Captain, I know. We had an accident a few days ago that left four people dead, so the check-in protocols have been stepped up. The Sunflower is ready to receive you. to Stiletto. We're leaving the convoy and continuing our voyage to the ISA base. It's been a pleasure traveling with you, Marcus. Dock with us next time you're in the neighborhood. I'll be more than happy to give you a rematch. Maybe by then you'll have exhausted the last of your lucky streak. I might just take you up on that, Francis. 
Don't get your hopes up about the rematch, though. Stratagos is all about strength of tactics. Luck doesn't come into it. <laughs> we shall see, Captain. Until next time, Hawking out. Goodbye, Hawking. Well, to Stiletto. Thanks for the escort, Captain. Traveling with you was truly an honor. May our paths cross again soon. Stiletto, approach the designated nav point. Aye, aye, sir. Conversation. Damn it, Frank, not over the radio. Or shall we discuss the time you challenged that lieutenant to a drinking contest and wound up stripping down to your luminescent frog shorts? Okay, okay. We'll talk about it face to face. Smile out. Calling Stiletto. Do you read us? Please confirm. Encoding OK. We are receiving your patrol. Attention, Stiletto. The minefield protecting the Sunflower is active. We are escorting you in. Copy that, Stiletto. Copy that, patrol. You can start off now. We're going to catch up. Activates the mines. Deactivation completed. You may head for the Sunflower now. Stiletto. Copy that, patrol. Boy, oh boy, what a day to be on patrol. The company has built at least 50 Stiletto-class vessels. And this was the first. It's like the big granddaddy of them all. <laughs> You're a pilot's pilot. Have you ever served on a Stiletto-class Corvette? No, sir. We only have two light Corvettes in the sector. Huh, Captain? Sir, aren't you the Marcus Cromwell? Feel free to come over when you're through with your duties. I'll have someone show you around. Thank you, sir. I'll do that, sir. Uh, sir, may I invite you for a drink in the canteen? I'd be honored to meet the great Marcus Cromwell in person. I mean, if you have time, sir. That is, I don't mean to impose, sir. It's just... With pleasure. I started as a fighter pilot myself. All right, a man 
Crash to deactivate it. Crisis averted. You can continue to the base. Be cool, people. Calling Sunflower. Thanks for warning us. What's the latest news? Due to the events on Mars, the corporation introduced a global embargo against aerospace, but the sector remains calm, sir. A long sought class heavy Corvette arrived at OSEC. The Rockets won the spring championship on Earth. That's all. I see. Can you link me up with Colonel Finn? I'm requesting an encoded channel. Of course, sir. One moment, please.